Hello, here we are with the last uh, presentation of the day, which uh, uh, we have seen many interesting contributions on food tourism and innovation. Now the focus is the authenticity, uh, an element that travelers are increasingly looking for during their travels and that can affect their satisfaction. I leave a speech to Jamie Lewitt. That, to create, that presented, that wrote this uh, paper and created this research. We were Robin uh, Di uh, Pietro, and then Jamie is the Department of Food Science and Nutrition of Fresno State University of California, and Robin Di Pietro is from the School of Hotel, Restaurant, and Tourism Management of the University of South California. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my name is Jamie Levitt, uh, and I am in the Department of Food Science and Nutrition at Fresno State which is the University in the center of California. Uh, admittedly, I am neither a food scientist nor a nutritionist. Uh, my background is in hospitality tourism and uh, food service management, uh, and the majority of my uh, teaching and research is related to the food service industry. And then research also expands into uh, things like food stores and restaurant authenticity and um, consumer behavior. So uh, I am uh, I am uh, American, uh, originally from uh, the very small state of Delaware, but. Is, is everybody hearing okay? Video. I'm sorry? You are a little muffled. Why don't you turn off your video and just do the screen share and use your microphone? Okay. There we go. Okay. Is that a little bit better? Okay. Uh, definitely let me know. Uh, and we'll we'll make sure to improve things uh, if if need be. So uh, I'm uh, American, uh, originally from uh, the state of Delaware, but uh, growing up, I lived in uh, Geneva, Switzerland, with my family, and that was really my first time uh, that I had an opportunity to be exposed to restaurants and cuisines that were a little different than the uh, traditional American uh, fare uh, in, in all of the delicious. Uh, junk food that we have in this country. Went to university in the States, but then decided to uh, seek employment after I graduated. And so I lived for two years in Ankara, Turkey. And one thing that's amazing about Turkey is that every town and city has their own culinary specialty. And so it, it really became an adventure to experience different cuisines. And, and then that experience continued over uh, when I uh, worked in Guangzhou, China, uh, which is also where I met my wife, uh, who now lives with me in the States. Uh, I've also spent time living in, in London, Belgium, and uh, a couple of other locations. And so my experiences uh, living overseas have really shaped my passion uh, for uh, the, the research and the teaching that I do. Now, uh, as many of us know, in recent years, uh, diners have become smarter people. They've become more discerning. We have celebrity chefs who are teaching us about different cuisines and cooking techniques. We are bombarded with food television and cooking shows. Uh, in the United States and really in a lot of other locations, we have uh, restaurants serving cuisines that really weren't available to the public but a couple of years ago, uh, as individuals uh, seek out new destinations to travel to, they're learning about different foods and different ingredients. And then lastly, with the growth in social media, individuals are able to share more images, more information, more ratings. Uh, and overall, we see that this has led to a situation where uh, customers know more, they want more, and they're interested in a greater variety of experiences. Now, this is important for the tourism industry because 
Uh, first of all, we know that tourists, compared to individuals uh, in their day-to-day -day lives, spend a disproportionate uh, amount of their budget dining out or dining away from home. Uh, right now, my wife and my uh, baby daughter were, uh, were in San Diego for a couple of days, and I can guarantee you that we're going to be participating in some uh, food tourism, uh, socially distanced food tourism, while we are here. Now, <clears throat> for certain types of tourists, uh, food tourists, as we'll call them in this study and, and for this presentation, having authentic experiences at the restaurants that they visit is something that is especially important to them. Now, that being said, there really is a gap in the research literature uh, relating to food tourism, restaurant authenticity, and particularly that relationship when uh, focusing specifically on food tourists. And so uh, the study that I'm presenting today uh, presents two uh, research uh, areas of focus or two research questions. The first is, uh, what is the influence of restaurant authenticity on tourists? And then uh, is that influence stronger between certain subgroups of tourists, such as food tourists? And so uh, that is the, the gaps that are being addressed in this study. So a little bit about restaurant authenticity. What is it? Uh, it can be an incredibly vague term, and it's something that can mean something a little bit different for different people. But overall, it's the perception that a restaurant is truly representative of a given culture. And if we look at the attributes in a restaurant that really have the strongest influence, on the perception that a restaurant is truly representative of a given culture, uh, those attributes would be the food and beverage of the restaurant, the heritage of the restaurant, and then lastly, the other diners who are present in the restaurant dining room. Now, it's an important concept because prior research has showed us that restaurant authenticity has a strong positive influence or a significant positive influence on important variables such as uh, customer satisfaction and customer loyalty to the restaurant. Now, I just want to, before we continue, uh, provide the definition that we use for food tourists in the given study, because again, I know that there are uh, several different definitions, but for the current study, uh, they are, first of all, individuals with strong levels of food involvement or have a strong presence of uh, food in their day-to-day -day life, but also when they travel, they actively seek out food-related activities when traveling. And so that can represent food tours, actively seeking out local restaurants, visits to markets, and so on. As we know, there's many different food tourism activities that one can take place in. Now, to tie this back to the World Food Travel Association uh, and labels that have been used in some of the research that they've done, this would be uh, your deliberate or your opportunistic type food tourists that we have um, identified in the current study. Now, on the other hand, general tourists are going to be uh, those individuals who have much less interest in food and in particular authentic food when they travel. These are individuals who are often uh, traveling for leisure. Maybe they do go to an authentic restaurant, but they're not seeking out that type of dining experience. Maybe they 
stumble upon it, but uh, it's not something that they seek out. Food is not a major feature for most of them in their uh, travel or their tourist experiences. Now, uh, it's important that any time that we conduct a study, that it is grounded in theory. And this particular study has been grounded in what's known as the Moravian Russell model, uh, also known as the SOR model. And Moravian Russell argues that a external stimulus, and in this case, uh, we are utilizing restaurants that are authentic as our uh, external stimulus, that stimulus will have a positive influence on an internal organism or a emotional response. Uh, so that's going to be things like satisfaction. And then lastly, uh, that uh, emotional response is going to have a positive impact on certain behaviors or behavioral intentions. And so uh, based on the literature, based on what we know about uh, food tourists and the Moravian Russell model, for the current study, we've developed a set of four hypotheses. And so the first is that restaurant authenticity, again, that's our stimulus, positively influences satisfaction. Satisfaction, which is our organism or our emotional response, positively influences restaurant loyalty. And then it also can influence uh, what's known as place attachment or one's uh, connection or desire to return to a given destination. Now, along with this, uh, based on what we know about uh, food tourists who actively seek out uh, food related experiences while they travel, uh, we hypothesize that relationships will be different between general tourists and food tourists. In particular, that uh, food tourists would see uh, restaurant authenticity having a stronger influence on their satisfaction, loyalty, and place attachment. Uh, now, to look at this visually, what we've done is we've uh, created a model. You can see here on the left side of the model, these are the uh, three restaurant attributes that I mentioned before that are the strongest influences on restaurant authenticity. So they're basically the, the, uh, the parts of our scale that comprise of restaurant authenticity. Uh, again, that's restaurant heritage, food and beverage, and then lastly, the restaurant diners. Uh, Eric, not a problem. And I can zoom as well here briefly. So uh, again, uh, the three dimensions on the left, these are the uh, restaurant attributes that have the strongest influence on a customer's perception of restaurant authenticity. Overall, restaurant authenticity, which is our stimulus, will positively influence our emotional organism satisfaction, which will then lead to a uh, response, which in this case uh, is restaurant loyalty and place attachment. Now, uh, our data was collected live. Uh, more specifically, uh, surveys were collected from six Southern style casual dining restaurants in the southeastern United States. And uh, we selected the South because uh, it tends to be one of the most traditional uh, cuisines in the United States. And it tends to be an area that has a lot of food tourist destinations. Uh, our data in particular was collected from the cities of Savannah and Charleston, South Carolina. Overall, we collected surveys from 575 tourists. Now, uh, this was general tourists and uh, food tourists. And we filtered out 
any of the individuals who were uh, locals at the destination. In particular, uh, to, to or more specifically to do that, we use the 50 mile rule. This is to say that tourists had traveled more than 50 miles to come to the destination and were spending at least a night in Savannah or Charleston, South Carolina. Now the model was tested using uh, Smart PLS 3.0, which is a uh, means of um, structural equation modeling. Uh, it's a little bit uh, newer, more contemporary than the covariance-based uh, structural equation modeling uh, softwares that are also available. And when we tested the model, when we tested our hypotheses, and we'll go back to full screen here, we found that each of our relationships in the model were significant. So this is to say that restaurant authenticity positively influenced satisfaction. So the more authentic that a customer perceives restaurant authenticity to be, the more satisfied that they are. The more satisfied that they are, then the more attached they are to a destination and the more loyal they feel to a given restaurant. <clears throat> and here I can zoom in a little bit just to show you the numbers, but I do have them uh, tabled on the next couple of slides. And you can see that uh, the relationship between uh, satisfaction, or excuse me, between restaurant at, uh, authenticity and satisfaction had a beta value of 0.468, relatively strong, and that was significant. Uh, at the 0 0.05 level, uh, satisfaction, uh, positively predicted place attachment, and uh, that was a sort of moderately strong relationship uh, with a beta value of 0.35, again, significant at the 0 0.05 level. And then lastly, restaurant authenticity, or uh, excuse me, it should read satisfaction, my mistake, uh, but satisfaction, positively predicted restaurant Loyalty, it was a very strong relationship, a uh, beta value of 0.735. And again, that was significant at the 0 0.05 level. So what this means is that for the first three hypotheses, all of the relationships in our model, uh, they were uh, positive, significant, and supported. Now, following this, we conducted what's known as a multi-group analysis, and basically, uh, this is a test to see if the relationships in this model are different between food tourists and general tourists. And what we expect to see is that uh, there is a stronger relationship between restaurant authenticity and satisfaction, satisfaction in both place attachment and restaurant loyalty. Now, when we conducted our multi-group analysis, what we found is that there was actually no significant difference between any of this relationships, uh, any of these relationships. This is to say that the uh, the influence of restaurant authenticity was the same for food tourists and general tourists, uh, and this means that uh, our fourth hypothesis was rejected. So, what does this mean? Well. Overall, there are clearly implications for theory. Uh, we see that our study supported the Moravian Russell model in the context of food tourism. Uh, and in, in the context of practitioners and, and management implications, what we find is that because there was not a strong significant difference in the influence of restaurant authenticity, between general and food tourists, that destinations and restaurants that are reaching out to uh, potential visitors need to make sure that they are generally casting a wide net. Uh, they're, they're going to uh, be able to have uh, an equally strong influence on these uh, tourists and these visitors if they are able to uh, connect with them. So overall, uh, if you're an authentic restaurant at a tourism destination, it's important that you're not neglecting these general tourists 
who may not necessarily be actively seeking out those food related experiences while they travel. So uh, lastly, I have my uh, references here and uh, am uh, excited to answer any of your questions. Uh, Ronaldo, so how were questionnaires distributed? Uh, so questionnaires were distributed, uh, questionnaires were distributed uh, live uh, via researchers, so it was myself uh, along with a couple of other uh, researchers uh, in the Southeast United States. Uh, we distributed them using uh, iPads and approached the diners after they had finished their meals. So they were approached um, at the dining room uh, when, uh, when they had finished their meal. Uh, the split I have to tell you, I need to go back and check my data and I apologize that I don't have it. Uh, we had more food tourists than general tourists, but it was a robust sample for both groups. Do you have any potential reasons that you didn't see that you can explain the, that there was not a difference between food tourists and general tourists in the model? I I think one um, explanation that we've considered is that, uh, for lack of a better term, some of the food tourists I think are a little bit overconfident. Uh, you know, they, they think themselves to be um, very involved, but maybe you're not um, prepared for some of the authentic dining experiences as they think they are. But I do think that that's a, an area worth uh, further inquiry. Perfect. Thank you. And starting from your conclusion, you said that there were no significant differences uh, on the influence of restaurant authenticity between general and food tourists. Destinations should consider developing marketing campaigns uh, which appeal to both subgroup of tourists. Starting from your study, uh, what can be the difference, differentiating elements for creating effective developing marketing campaigns? I, I think the, the key is really casting a wide net. And so this might be uh, uh, having um, targeted campaigns toward different uh, consumer groups, but the, the key is to understand that uh, that influence of authenticity is going to be the same depending on who that group is. So this may be being, uh, in terms of your marketing a little bit more specific or a little bit more detailed when you're reaching out to food tourists a little bit more broad a little bit more general towards those general tourists uh, but the key is to make sure that you're casting a wide net so that you're not leaving anybody out uh ronaldo uh so uh I, I think your question is, were we uh, were we too vague or too um, broad in our definition of authenticity? And uh, let, let me clarify that the questions that we asked specifically, or the items that we included, specifically related to attributes in a restaurant environment. So things like the food and beverage, the heritage of the restaurant, the environment, and then also other diners in the restaurant. And so they were uh, items that were specifically related to, to being in a restaurant. Um, but, but please let, let me know if I, I need to um, uh, clarify or expand upon that answer. I mean, I think uh, that um we can uh, give the word to, to, to Eric so he can uh, give the conclusion to sessions 
And so I want to say thank you to everybody. I wanted to say thank you to Matthew Stone. Uh, and uh, uh, so we work out together and to Eric. And now I don't know if Matthew want to say something and then uh, Eric for the conclusion. I just want to say thank you again for the presentations. Uh, you'll get copies of the presentations sent to you. And uh, let's keep this network going of, of food travel research. I love the work that's being done and, and hope it continues. And Matthew, let us know when you're ready to uh, head down south. Jamie, could you stop sharing your screen for a minute, please? For sure. Great. There we go. Very good. Thank you. Well, um, this is a wrap, we say in English, or that means it's the conclusion of the 2020 Food Treks Food Travel Research Summit. I would like to thank all of the presenters for their excellent work, their very interesting research, and helping to drive the industry forward. We really could not innovate without all of the great work that you're doing. I'd like to also thank Roberta and Matthew as co-chairs of our scientific committee for the second year now. They've both been great partners to work with, very helpful, knowledgeable, friendly, always there for, for whatever we need. So we really appreciate your extra effort. And I'd also like to thank the other members of the scientific committee for their assistance as well. So this is what will happen next for all of the delegates. We will be producing the videos that have been recorded, making sure that anything like time lags and things like that have been cut out. And then we will be editing those and optimizing them and uploading them to our secure website where any conference attendees can access the videos for the next year. We will also be sending the conference proceedings to you when those are available. We just have to produce those, and it does take um, a little bit of time to get that done. But anything else that uh, was promised to you as a benefit, if you have not yet received it, by all means, please do get in touch with us at the association, help at worldfoodtravel.org. We want to make sure that you got all of the benefits that you uh, were entitled to when you signed up as a delegate. Um, for the Food Treks Food Travel Research Summit. So the next event that you can plan on is our Food Treks Global, which is going to be taking place in April 15 to 16, I believe we said. And that is going to be a two-day uh, conference for the trade. And the theme of that is going to be sustainability in food and beverage tourism. So we're looking forward to bringing that to you next spring. So. Take care of yourselves, be well, and let's all keep our fingers crossed that we can get past this crisis quickly and start traveling and eating again, because I certainly <laughs> miss some of my favorite meals uh, in other countries. Thank you all again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.